Hey, I'm going to show today how you can take these battery operated LEDs and convert them to run off of your uh, AC power in the house. I've got these around the house for the holidays and in some cases where I am near an outlet I prefer to not use batteries. I find that you could put three double A's in here and it'll kill them off pretty fairly quickly especially even the rechargeables. Here's one that's out of the box for example, so I've got three Amazon rechargeable batteries in here. I'm not going to get more than a day, two days at most, and it's not on all day uh, on this kind of a setup. So what I've been doing over the last few years is um, I've got a bunch of these wall warts laying around. This is from an old cell phone. I don't know from what cell phone, but uh, all USB cell phone chargers are 5 volts. So you have to compare, make sure that your wall wart says 5 volts on it and it has to be DC. But most likely if you're like me you've got a, a box or a bag full of these old chargers. And it doesn't have to be this kind of a charger. It could be one of the old uh, iPhone or I, not actually iPhone, uh, I, iPod chargers. This would need a USB cable, but if you have a spare USB cable, you could plug it in there, cut the other end off, and then I'm going to show you how to solder that end to this little box here. This is not just holding batteries. There is a chip in here, which is a regulator, and in some cases, some of these LEDs blink and they have timers on them. So there's a little bit of a circuitry in there, but this is really easy. We're just going to go for the negative and the positive. We're going to solder the wires to it, and now you've got a, a good um, light set, these micro LEDs, that can be plugged into the wall and you don't have to worry about feeding it batteries every few days. And it's, it's not a lot of work. Yeah, you need some soldering skills, but nothing crazy, because we're just going to solder two simple wires. It's not uh, fine, super fine electronic type work that we're going to be dealing here. And uh, it, they work really well. At the end of the video, I'll show a couple conversions that I did. And I've been doing this for a few years now. And I, I just, I like the solution. Okay, so on this particular battery holder, these batteries are in series, which means that each normal dry cell is about 1.5 volts. A rechargeable is about 1.2. But with three of them, you're multiplying the voltage. So it's 1.5 times 3 of these, okay, which would equal about 4.5 volts. If they were in parallel, it would be 1.5 volts, but more amps. But in this case, we're producing about 4.5 volts. You can feed it with 5 volts. The extra half volt's not going to hurt it. I believe these things have a regulator in them, which helps. Now, what I recommend doing is soldering the wires. What you do in this particular one, all of them will be slightly different, the wiring. None of them are exactly the same. Just look for the negative, the end negative, which is here. And if you notice, there's a wire coming off this one. Well, that's producing the final voltage. If you were to tap off of here, you wouldn't get the 4.5 volts. You're going to get the 4.5 volts off the last one in series. So you can also use a voltmeter. If you have a voltmeter, use it if you don't quite understand this. And we're going to solder to this connector from our little power wart that I've got here. And we're going to solder the negative to this spring connector here. What I recommend doing also before you start soldering Tie a knot in this. We're going to create a strain relief so this thing doesn't get pulled out accidentally. So put a little knot in there. Leave enough of a wire inside that you can manage it. And this should work. You can always adjust it if you have too much or too little. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put a little notch in the plastic. And then this way you've got a really good strain relief so it's not going to yank your soldering job off. Okay, for soldering, I have something called a third hand. If you don't have anything like this, uh, just use some masking tape to help hold the wire in position while you solder it. It's 
just get it on that terminal. Okay, so I've got the wire in position. I'll try to do this um, with the camera on while I'm soldering. It's a little difficult because the camera gets in my way. And I'm just going to apply a little bit of solder. You might actually hit the plastic case while you're doing this with your soldering iron, which is no big deal. Okay, so that's now a good connection. The next step, what we want to do is you'll need a little knife. We need to cut a little slot in the plastic for this strain relief. So I've got a little number 11 blade here, exacto, and I'm going to put a little slot in the plastic. You could probably use some snips too. This plastic seems to be pretty brittle. I'll leave it up to you, but I'm going to go in at an angle. Obviously, be careful that you don't cut yourself. If you have a Dremel tool, I would use it. That would be the easiest way to create this little slot. Because if you don't create the slot for the uh, strain relief, you're probably going to yank it out at some point. It doesn't have to be terribly big. Just enough so we can get that lid back on there. Probably need to go a little bit more. And obviously the hole can be, or the slot can be bigger than the wire because the knot is huge. So there's no way it's going to slide out of there. Okay, that looks like that'll be flush. Okay, so I put the now, lid on, and as you can see, this is what the strain relief should look like. That's important, so you don't yank those cables out of there. All right, and now for the final test, we're going to plug this into the wall. And we'll plug that in here. We'll turn it on. It's already on. There's two positions on here. There's something with a timer. Oh, a blink. I'm sorry. This one has a blink and it has a regular on setting. So this is an easy way to convert these micro LEDs uh, to using power. I just want to stress that you make sure your power supply is 5 volts. It's DC. And if you have a voltmeter, use it to confirm and don't use this outdoors, obviously. Just indoor stuff. And I'm going to show a couple of the lights that I have around the house so you can see how well this works out. Okay, so this is a Santa Claus, very old school. And last year I put a bunch of micro LEDs on his sled. And it was battery operated. And now it's running off the power. And this is my oldest conversion. I did this several years ago. This is a uh, Department 56 tree. It has a bunch of micro LEDs on it. And it's using an old iPhone charger with a USB cable that I snipped off. And then this one I did also, I think, a couple years ago. It's got a bunch of LEDs and it's running off the power. And I like not having to recharge the batteries all the time and change them out every couple days. It works out really well. Here is also one that I converted last year. This is an old piece and I put the pure white LEDs on it and I just hot glued the, the white box to the back of the uh, ornament here and then it's got a little adapter on it converting the power.